hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'll be talking about the capnography waveforms that helps a lot with when you're looking at a ventilator also for usmle there's a lot of questions coming up on that so let's get started uh, before i discuss all those waveforms that you might find uh, challenging i want to give you an idea about the principle itself of measuring co2 what is it exactly so the first thing that happens is that we need metabolism right and before these cells metabolize oxygen into carbon dioxide the oxygen must first get in through the air right so this patient needs to breathe in oxygen and oxygen needs to pass into the blood from the alveoli and to the cells and then the cells that metabolize oxygen via aerobic respiration into uh, with carbs or anything any source of energy into carbon dioxide and water and then this carbon dioxide will end up into the circulation as something called PaCO2, arterial CO2, which then is exhaled into the air at the end of expiration called end tidal CO2. And that's exactly the thing that we measure with capnography. It's the end tidal CO2. You see what a reflection of what is it? Like, it's a reflection of so much going on. It means this patient is alive, right? The patient has breathed in oxygen, the cells have used it, and have used aerobic metabolism to bring out CO2. You can also see that the arterial CO2 directly correlates with end tidal CO2 because it's exhaled into end tidal CO2. So the higher the arterial CO2, the higher the entidal CO2 and vice versa. And any condition that affects metabolism or gas exchange will affect entidal CO2, right? So with this background, I want to show you different waveforms. Number one, let's start with the normal, okay? What is this? Take a look at this graph, okay? We have a y-axis here showing us the CO2 in millimeters of mercury. And we have the x-axis showing us the cycles of respiration. So we got one, two, three cycles in front of us here. That means the patient is breathing in three times per the time period that we recorded that. Okay, And then we have one positive wave and one negative wave. What does that mean? A positive wave means CO2 is coming out and is measured by the device, right? And a negative wave means that we have less CO2 detected by the device. Now, when the patient takes in a deep breath called inspiration, they're essentially not contributing any form of carbon dioxide to the detector, right? Because the air that you breathe in is mostly nitrogen, 78% and oxygen with only very little CO2. That's something in the 0 0.0 some percent. And so it's not going to contribute anything during inspiration, right? When you take in from the atmosphere. However, when you bring out carbon dioxide from your body, that's exhalation, it will be detected here by the detector. And that is a significant proportion, right? And that's why it shows us a positive wave with expiration and tidal CO2. It means CO2 has come out and been detected, right? Now, the higher this wave, the more the CO2 you've exhaled, the lower, the lower, right? And there is a level here, a normal range, which is around 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury. That's very close to the PaCO2 required in the arteries, 35 to 45, but this is an upper limit of 40. Let's take a look at what can happen with different abnormalities. Look at this, okay? Look at this. 
Number one, I have a really high waveform, as you can see, as compared with the remaining ones. This is, by the way, the normal range shown in gray. So initially, the patient has exhaled so much CO2, as you can see here. And then later, you can see that their end tidal CO2 is at a lower level and is getting lower with time. The baseline is actually going down. So instead of 35, maybe this is 30 or something. What's happened is that this patient is breathing out faster than he should. This is called hyperventilation. Initially, this was detected as a lot of CO2 being detected by the end tidal CO2 detector, right? But then later, as he keeps hyperventilating and getting rid of so much CO2, the carbon dioxide in his blood, the PaCO2, is getting lower, and therefore this, the carbon dioxide that he's exhaling is also lower. And so this lowers the baseline because end tidal CO2 is a reflection of PaCO2. If PaCO2 is low, then end tidal CO2 is low. But initially it was high because he was hyperventilating, means he was washing out so much CO2 detected by the detector until the P he runs out of it and so the baseline goes down. Now the opposite is true for this. You can see that initially it was a normal waveform, but then it keeps rising and rising till the baseline goes up. This is hypoventilation. And later you should see that the rate is actually going to be like the rate is going to be slower. This patient could be bradypneic. So you're going to see less number of cycles here. That should be the case. So that means this patient is taking less breaths than usual or is not breathing with sufficient effort. So he's accumulating PaCO2. And that means that the end tidal CO2 that he's exhaling is also up and that increases the baseline so that's hypoventilation all right now let's take a look at another waveform take a look at this here oh my god what's going on the waveform is no longer square the waveform is called a shark fin appearance like this a shark fin why isn't it square? It means that this patient is taking much longer to bring out the carbon dioxide than he should. And the baseline of entitled CO2 is actually going up. You can see that here. It's going up. He's accumulating CO2 because he has a really hard time getting rid of it. He has a really hard time getting rid of it. Instead of getting rid of it, quickly like this one for example uh, an upslope that's really quick he's taking so much time the upslope is really slow because of obstruction so this is typical of obstruction in the airways during expiration this is typical guys of bronchoconstriction let's say copd exacerbation or asthma or foreign body or anything in the bronchi and bronchioles that's impairing fast release and expiration of the CO2. And in the end, obviously this patient is gonna retain a lot of CO2 as a result, okay? Now let's take a look at this one. Oh my God, so this patient was initially good. Everything was fine, normal waveform, normal level, but then suddenly, the waveform disappeared. What happened is that this patient was intubated probably, and then the tube came out of place that it's no longer allowing ventilation to happen and no longer detecting CO2, and that's an emergency by the way. It means this patient is not respiring, he's not ventilating, because if he was ventilating, like what we described here, he would have brought out some CO2 to be detected, but here there is none. So he's dependent on the endotracheal tube and we should place it back right away. 
Now let's take a look at this. The waveform looks normal, but it's kind of blunted. You can see here that the baseline is really low. It's around 20 or even less. I think it's about 9 or something. So that means the patient has an issue with aerobic respiration, guys. This patient could be in shock with decreased perfusion. This patient could be in cardiac arrest, meaning that not enough oxygen is reaching the tissues to begin with. So the tissues are not producing enough CO2. So the PaCO2 itself is really low because the tissues are doing anaerobic metabolism and therefore whatever is respired and exhaled out and tidal CO2 is also low. And so the entire baseline is low even though respiration is normal. So there's nothing wrong with ventilation, but there's something wrong with metabolism and perfusion. And so this patient needs oxygen, needs us to fix the problem of perfusion, needs us to fix the cardiac arrest. And for your information, I want you to know that the goal of end tidal CO2 while we are resuscitating, while we're doing CPR, is we want to reach at least 10 to 15 for this to be considered efficient compressions, okay? If that's not the case, you need to change the providers or change whoever is doing the compressions, right? And then when it suddenly rises after such a small baseline, it suddenly goes up, that's a really good sign. I should, like, I should clap my hands and like do all sort of celebrations because that means there is return of spontaneous circulation suddenly it went up it means oxygen is, has gone to the tissues tissues have undergone aerobic respiration and produced so much co2 to be detected that's a good sign okay so these are the two uses of capnography with um cpr and cardiac arrest and how about that guys this is a really bad sign a flat line means there is no carbon dioxide coming out at all, and that's a state of apnea. It doesn't mean the patient is dead. It just means the patient is not breathing now. So you either save them or not. Okay, so I hope this video cleared some concepts about capnography, guys. Let me know what you think. All the best.